Donald Trump is coming back to the White House for a second term, and in his cabinet, he has surrounded himself with war hawks and neoconservatives. In order to run the U.S. State Department and oversee foreign policy, Trump nominated Marco Rubio, an extreme pro-war neocon who has strongly supported every single major war in the U.S., in recent years, Rubio has pushed very hard for war on both China and Iran. We do have near-peer adversaries. We didn't 25 years ago. The United States lived in a unipolar world where we were the only show in town. Now there are an, at least one unprecedented near-peer adversary. The Chinese Communist Party uh, is a challenge to the United States, unlike greater even than what the Soviet Union was, um, because they are a commercial rival, a technological rival, a geopolitical rival, a diplomatic rival, uh, and, an econo uh, and a commercial one. And in addition to all of that, they are also uh, a military threat uh, to the country as they continue to develop. And all of the nominees to be top officials in the upcoming Trump administration agree on pushing for war on both China and Iran. All of them are extremely pro-Israel and anti-Palestinian. Israel represents everything we want that region of the world to be a democracy, free enterprise, and a strong American ally, don't we wish the entire Middle East looked that way? It is a nation with a special and unique purpose, unlike other, other na any other nation in the world. And I, for one, am proud that the United States has stood with Israel for all these years. Senator Rubio, will you call for a No, I will not. On the contrary, I want them to destroy every element of Hamas they can get their hands on. These people are vicious animals. And That's what about position. the civilians that I blame are being Hamas. killed every day? Hamas should stop hiding behind civilians, putting civilians in the way. And Marco Rubio has constantly called for the U.S. government to attack Iran. In October, a month before the presidential election, he called for threatening the survival of the Iranian regime through maximum pressure and direct and disproportionate measures. When he says direct measures, he means directly attacking Iran, bombing Iran. And he insists that the U.S. attacks should be disproportionate. Rubio is also a religious fundamentalist, and he sees the U.S. as the leader of the so-called Judeo-Christian West and claims that it's in a civilizational war against Chinese communism and against Muslims in countries like Iran. And on Twitter, he constantly posts extremely hawkish quotes from the Bible that talk about the war that broke out in heaven and Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. So this is a very clear sign that he wants to prepare for an apocalyptic world war led by the U.S. empire against China and their allies. This extremist view is also shared, by the way, by Donald Trump's defense secretary, the Fox News host, Pete Hegseth. He wrote a book called American Crusade, saying very clearly that he is a Christian Western crusader fighting against the non-Christian communist East, and Hegseth has tattoos of the Crusades. He's a proud crusader. That's what he sees himself as. So the Trump administration is led by neo-colonialist warmongers who want to wage war all around the world to save the colonialist West. Pretty much everything that Marco Rubio does pushes for war on China. That's his ultimate end goal is a war on China led by the U.S. And in fact, he has gone so far as to say that we're not just in a new Cold War against Beijing. He says we're in something that's far more dangerous than the Cold War. He says we face a rival in China with leverage over our economy, influence over our society and our media, universities, investment funds, and big tech serving as their lobbyists. So he's claiming with this ridiculous Cold War paranoia that the Communist Party of China controls everything in the U.S. and his solution is a war on China. That's what he's pushing for. What's very clear is that in Rubio's State Department, he is going to aggressively try to organize coups to overthrow the leftist governments of Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, which Trump's previous national security advisor, John Bolton, the neocon, had referred to as the so-called Troika of Tyranny, well, Marco Rubio shares the exact same worldview as John Bolton. There's no difference between them. 
And Rubio has claimed that, quote, the criminal dictatorships in Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua are enablers of Putin's war crimes in the Ukraine war, end quote. So he's trying to link Latin America to the U.S. boogeymen in Russia and China to justify trying to overthrow their governments, to justify meddling, organizing coup attempts. We saw this, for instance, under Trump. He backed a very violent coup attempt against Nicaragua's leftist government in 2018. And then in 2019, the Trump administration backed a very violent coup attempt in Venezuela. There was a failed invasion of Venezuela trying to overthrow Venezuela's independent leftist anti-imperialist government. And then also in 2019, the Trump administration backed a successful coup against Bolivia's democratically elected left-wing government. And they're going to continue doing the same. This is especially the case now that we know that Marco Rubio is going to be Trump's secretary of state overseeing the State Department. In fact, back in 2019, when Trump was carrying out a coup attempt against Venezuela's government, Marco Rubio went even further and he asked Trump to invade Venezuela. He said that he wanted a U.S. military invasion to overthrow Venezuela's independent leftist government. Marco Rubio is a neo-colonialist. And they're following the exact same ideology of John Bolton. In fact, in 2020, John Bolton published a book called The Room Where It Happened, where he discussed his experience as Donald Trump's national security advisor. And in that book, Bolton invoked the colonialist Monroe Doctrine. This is a 200-year-old colonial doctrine that essentially says that Latin America is the backyard of the United States and that the U.S. empire supposedly has the right to intervene in Latin America to overthrow independent governments in order to prevent so-called threats in the Western Hemisphere. And in his book, Bolton said that China, Russia, and Iran are so-called threats, and the U.S. empire will not allow any government in Latin America, whether or not it's democratically elected and popular, they don't care, they will not allow them to have close relations with China, Russia, and Iran. This is neocolonialism, and this is exactly the policy that Donald Trump had in his first term and is going to continue in his second term. If you look at the people around him, all of them are neocons and imperialists and warmongers. If you look at the statements that Marco Rubio makes publicly, you can see that he constantly is fear-mongering about China's growing and menacing influence in the Western Hemisphere. And most recently in November, he was fear-mongering about a port that China built in Peru, in South America, to expand trade between China and Latin America. And Marco Rubio is, is very clearly saying that the U.S. is going to prevent countries in Latin America from having close relations with China in this way. If you just take a glance at Marco Rubio's Twitter account, you can see that he is the most unhinged neocon out there. He's constantly tweeting, condemning Cuba, Nicaragua, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. I mean, this is the exact same foreign policy of John Bolton and George Bush. And Donald Trump has surrounded himself with these Bush-era neocons once again, just as he did in his first administration. Another part of the narrative that Trump and Rubio have been pushing is blaming China for deindustrialization in the U.S. and the loss of manufacturing jobs. It was U.S. companies, it was U.S. capitalists and billionaires who got rich by outsourcing, by offshoring jobs. They were the ones who did it. China did not force anyone to open factories in China to exploit low-paid Chinese workers. It wasn't China that was forcing U.S. companies to do that. They voluntarily went to do that. They wanted to do that. But now the ridiculous narrative of Trump and neocons like Rubio is that we have to scapegoat China. We have to blame China. And eventually what they're pushing for is war on China. That's the only so-called solution that they actually have. Rubio is such an unhinged neocon that just a few weeks before the elections in November, he claimed without any evidence that China, Iran, and Russia were trying to interfere in these U U.S. elections. Again, no proof. I mean, he just is an insane neocon who lives on Mars in a fantasy land, and he just manufactures that these Cold War conspiracies and, and has this McCarthyite paranoia. You can see this kind of McCarthyism in the comments that 
Marco Rubio has made on Fox News. This is an interview in September when he claimed that communist China is infiltrating U.S. businesses, universities, and the government. Here is this insane McCarthyism on Fox News. The Chinese have figured out that the way to influence America is not necessarily at the federal level where there's a lot of scrutiny and they're aiming at local governments, they're aiming at state government officials, at the business class at, and universities, obviously, but they're really focusing very heavily now on local and state government, mayors, commissioners, people at the county level, employees of local government, because there's not nearly enough scrutiny. So you remember Russiagate, the ridiculous conspiracy that Putin was controlling Trump? Well, now that Trump's coming back, the Republicans, his new administration, are going to push Chinagate. They're going to accuse all of their opponents of secretly working for China. They're going to bring back a new McCarthyism. And they're also going to go after free speech. That's their next goal, is to stifle the free speech of people who are criticizing their warmongering against China, censoring people who say that the U.S. should not wage a new Cold War on China. As an example of this, here is Marco Rubio in the U.S. Congress claiming in September that China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and Cuba are pushing so-called disinformation in the U.S. And, and why is he saying this? Because he wants to set the stage, the grounds for censoring people who are accused falsely by the U.S. regime of spreading disinformation or echoing disinformation on behalf of the boogeymen of the U.S. empire. This is a tricky minefield. And it's even trickier now because Russia's still doing it more than anybody else. You don't need to have a big, expensive operation to pursue some of this. I think we should anticipate that in the years to come, and it's happening already, the Iranians are gonna get into this. They already are. The Chinese are gonna get into this business. They already are. And you see them using that in other countries to sow discord and division. It's coming. It's also North Korea. Rubio is also threatening the U.S. southern neighbor Mexico, and he complained that China is trying to evade U.S. tariffs by instead rerouting products through Mexico, and he has introduced legislation to punish Mexico as well. So the Trump administration is going to even further expand neo-colonial U.S. meddling in Latin America. And in fact, Trump's nominee for border czar, Tom Homan, said in an interview on Fox News that Donald Trump is going to send U.S. Special Operations Forces, the U.S. military, into Mexico, violating Mexican sovereignty in order to take out cartels, is what he claimed. This would be an invasion of Mexico. The Mexican government has said it very clearly. We do not support this. We are against a U.S. military intervention. This would be an illegal invasion of the U.S. southern neighbor. But Trump is fully on board for this. And the excuse they're using to justify this is the cartels, going after the cartels. But this is hilariously ironic because Rubio himself has been popularly condemned as narco Rubio. And why is that? Because he himself has been linked to drugs. In fact, Marco Rubio's brother-in-law was imprisoned. He was convicted for being involved in distributing $15 million of cocaine. He was a drug trafficker, and Marco Rubio was very close to his brother-in-law, this drug, drug lord, very friendly with him. In fact, Marco Rubio used his position in the Florida government to lobby regulators to give his drug trafficking brother-in-law a real estate license. So now these are the same people who are saying we have to attack Mexico because of the drug cartels. I mean, the hypocrisy never ends. So that is the real face of Marco Rubio, Donald Trump's secretary of state, who will be running U.S. foreign policy. He's an extreme warmonger, a neocon, a religious fundamentalist who essentially sees that the West, the Judeo-Christian West, is in an existential civilizational war against China and Iran, and he's going to push for further escalation. Meanwhile, he has been linked to drugs and his close brother-in-law was imprisoned for trafficking $15 million of cocaine, but he'll still use drugs and cartels as a justification to try to impose U.S. neo-colonial policies in Latin America. This is going to be Donald Trump's right-hand man as they oppose peace. Donald Trump is not in any way a pro-peace politician 
We saw that in his first term, and we're going to see that again in his second term. On that note, I'm going to conclude. I am Ben Norton, the editor-in-chief of Geopolitical Economy Report. Please like and subscribe. Please share this. I will see you all next time.